Welcome back. I'm Ashley Feliciano and welcome to be to how to become an emotion tamer. Today we're going to be talking about emotion coaching and I'm really excited about this because as I have implemented emotion coaching with my daughter, I've seen so much help in helping her with her tantrums and just helping her be able to to know what's wrong as well as um, I've seen the way she responds to me in a more empathetic manner. So to get started, we're going to first talk about what emotion coaching is. So, or I guess where emotion coaching came from. So, um, John Gottman is a researcher on relationships and he um, has done a lot of research with um, marriages. But one of the things he did is he researched families and the way they interacted with their children. And he researched the way that um, the parents help their children through their emotions. And he noticed that parents whose children were able to easily work through their emotions, or not easily be, be able to more quickly and be able to not internalize, but to be able to um, work through them. They had less um, school problems, less health problems. The healthiest of those children, all their parents did the same things, which he started to term as emotion coaching. So essentially, um, he sees the parent as a coach teaching the child how to manage their emotions so that one day the child can manage their emotions on their own. So now he has created like a five-step process for this, um, for emotional coaching. So the first step is being aware of your child's emotions. The second step is realizing that emotions are an opportunity for closeness. The third step is, um, listening and responding empathetically. The fourth step is um, labeling the emotion in a way the child can understand. And the fifth step is problem solving while still maintaining the parent's limits. And so today we're going to go through those. So first I want you to think about, um, I'm going to give you a little scenario and think about how you would respond to this. So your child comes up to you crying because they've lost their toy. Now, would you respond with, uh, oh, it's fine, it's just a toy, get over it, don't be a baby? Or would you respond um, with, a, well, you shouldn't have lost your toy, but there's no reason to cry, like you should have taken better care of it, go play. Or would you have been like, oh, just get it out, just get it out, cry as much as you want, it's okay, it's sad. Or would you respond with a, saying, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that you're sad, that you lost your toy, that can be really hard. You know, what can we do to help you find your toy? Or maybe what can we do in the future so you don't lose your toy? Now, how would you respond to that? Now, each of these responses, um, John Gottman labeled as a different kind of, of like emotional parenting. So the first parenting, the first one he would count as a disapproving parent, a parent who makes a child feel like their emotions are they shouldn't show emotions so they say things like don't be a baby don't cry you're scared of nothing and those type of things so they disapprove of the even the showing of emotions whatsoever the second parent the parent who said oh i'm so sorry just go outside the dismissing parent is what he would call it is somebody who just kind of dismisses the child's emotions as either not important or really that they don't matter that they shouldn't be having an emotion both of those kinds of parenting will eventually lead children. Um, he studied this for years, okay? So like he started studying this, um, well, the book came out in the 90s. I think he started studying it in like the 70s and 80s. So he watched these children grow up. And what he saw was that um, these children, the dismissing parents and the disapproving parents um, who showed of uh, of their children's emotions. The children grew up with less self-esteem. They um, didn't know how to handle their emotions later on because they've been told conflicting messages all their life that, oh, they shouldn't cry that they're being a baby or that it's not that important of their emotions. And so that eventually starts to take, to affect the whole child's character and their belief about themselves. So then the third parent who's just like, cry, get it out, get it out. Well, that seems like a good, like, oh, you're embracing their emotion. The problem is, is you're not setting limits to that emotion. You're not helping the child through the emotion. You're just letting them have the emotion. 
And children crave limits. They crave boundaries, right? They need that. So what Gottman calls that is the laissez-faire parent. Um, other times you'll hear it called the promiscuous parent. Someone who just like lets their children do what they do. Now, what we found in studies with that is those children still don't learn how to manage their emotions because they never learned how to, they were allowed to have their emotions, but they never learned how to work through those emotions. And so instead, they just have these big blow ups and they don't know how to like calm themselves back down or they don't know why they're having these emotions. So the fourth kind of parent was uh, the parent who said, oh, I'm so sorry that you lost your toy. Yeah, that can be super sad. Let's either see how we can find it like, let's go find your toy, or what can we do so you don't lose your toy next time? That would be considered like an emotion coaching parent. Now, caveat, before we start this, because when I first learned about emotion coaching, I thought this is so impractical, there's no way this will work. Emotion coaching takes time, and it takes consistency, and it also is not practical in every situation. But the more often you do it, in the small situations than in the situations that are kind of big where it's like harder to do it because like your child's running out into the street, you're obviously not gonna emotion coach them in the middle of the street. You're gonna bring them back home. You're gonna work through it together. But there will be times when it's not practical and that's okay. But the research shows the more you do it, the more consistent you do it, the better outcomes for your child because they will learn how to handle their emotions so that they're able to essentially emotion coach themselves in the end. So we're going to start um, with that first rule. The first rule is being aware of your child's emotions. So last week's video, we talked a lot about emotional intelligence. And the reason why we started off with that is so that we're aware of emotions and what they do to us, but we're also aware that our children have emotions and they do things, it does things to them too. So I'm going to just give a little scenario that happened this week with me and my daughter as, and we'll work through the emotion coaching steps through this scenario. So a couple days ago, I was trying to get my baby in the car. He was really sick. Um, we had to go to the doctor and so I was getting him in the car and uh, my daughter walked down our front steps and then just stopped. And I was getting my baby buckled in the car and I was like, come on, come on, Nayeli, you gotta come. I need you to get in the car. And she just is screaming, crying, mom, come pick me up, come pick me up. I don't wanna go. And I was like, you have to go. We have to go to the doctor. You cannot stay here. And I had just hurt my back. And so I couldn't carry her. So I was like, no, no, you've gotta come, come get in the car. And she, well, she wasn't crying yet. She was just like, no, I'm not going. And I was like, please come on. And she's like, no, I want you. And I was like, I know I'm right here at the car, come to me. Anyway, so she didn't wanna come. And so I got angry and I was like, Nayeli, get in the car now or you're gonna get in trouble. And so then she runs to the car and she gets in the car and starts crying. And that's when I realized, wait, I'm supposed to be working on emotional intelligence with my children as well as being an emotion coach, right? Um, and so I was like, oh, Ashley, okay. So I said, Nayeli, are you feeling kind of sad? Cause I was recognizing she has emotions too. Maybe she was sad about something. Maybe we forgot like a toy in the house, I wasn't quite sure. And she said, no, I'm not sad, I'm scared. So that was the first step, is recognizing that my daughter had emotions. She was scared of something. Now, I didn't know what she was scared of, but she was scared of something. And if I would have realized that, we wouldn't have had that whole yelling to get her in the car. I would have, if we would have been able to work through that. So I was like, okay, so I'm buckling her in the car. And as I'm buckling in, her, in the car, we kind of go on to step number two, which is recognizing that our emotions are an opportunity for closeness. Now, a lot of times when we see somebody screaming or angry or sad, we kind of turn away. We don't like emotions. We get kind of nervous about seeing other people express emotions. And so we have to learn to realize that emotions are not bad. It's okay for people to feel emotions and it's okay for us to feel emotions. So realizing that my daughter is crying She's not being manipulative. She just is having emotions. So I'm gonna take this opportunity and say, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And so that was just that opportunity for closeness of like, you're scared? What's so scary? So that leads into step number three, which step number three is listen and respond empathetically. Now it's really important when you listen, 
that this step, but you do listen and you're not trying to fix their problem. You're just trying to hear what the problem is because nobody likes to be immediately told as they're trying to say, I had this really crappy day. We should have done this. We want people to understand what we're feeling. It's natural. So listen to your child. They feel the same way. So I said, you are scared. What were you scared of? And Naily said, Mickey. And I was like, oh, that's right. We have this blow up Mickey on our porch we bought for Halloween. It has vampire teeth. And she's terrified of him. She loves Mickey Mouse, so we thought this would be so fun. She's terrified of him. And I totally forgot. And so I, so my empathetic self, so like my parent self just like wanted to laugh because I was like, oh my gosh, Mickey, really? That's what she's, but I was trying to be empathetic. And see, that's the step of motion coaching that's so important is taking a chance to be empathetic, to think in your child's shoes. So for me, I had to put myself in my three-year-old shoes and think, how would that feel to have this big blow up hanging over you that has these sharp looking teeth? That'd be kind of scary. And so I said, oh man, Nayeli, that was, that would be so scary. Was is it his teeth that scared you? And she's like, yeah, I don't like his sharp teeth. I said, oh, wow, yeah, I am, I can see why you were scared. So now fourth is labeling the emotion. Now, Nayeli had already labeled the emotion for me. So I was able to just be like, yeah, I can understand why you were scared. And you were scared to walk alone because that was the issue. She didn't want to walk alone. She wanted me there with her. But in other instances, when you may be emotion coaching, you may have to kind of read between the lines and figure out what emotion they're having. So maybe when your child is having a tantrum and they were just playing with their blocks, you can be like, oh, they're frustrated because their tower keeps falling over. And you can kind of be like, oh, what's happening? And they'll be, they'll be like, my tower is falling over. And you're like, oh, man, that's so hard. I hate it when that happens, you know? That's really frustrating. I bet you're feeling frustrated. When we name the emotion for the children, our younger children don't have the vocabulary, so they don't even know kind of what they, they know this feeling is going on, but they don't even know what that feeling is, like what it means. So by naming it, we give them the power to deal with it. In the last um, video of emotional intelligence, we talked about name it to tame it. There's another theory by Lammy and Lammy, um, which I'll link the research article down below. And they talk about um, how there's two reasons why they think naming an emotion is so powerful. One is like we talked about um, the, the, with the name entertainment with the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex and how um, those talking to each other kind of sends out calming signals to the body. The second one, um, the second theory is they call, um, is that as they, know what it is they say i'm frustrated they take ownership of it and then all of a sudden that feeling becomes something they can handle they're like okay i'm frustrated what can i do about that frustration so in my case of my daughter my daughter was scared and so then we were able to be like well what can we do about being scared and when you have know what emotion you have then it's easier to tackle that problem and that just happens to be the fifth step in the emotion coaching is problem solving so in this case nayeli and i we talked about well, you were scared, so what What could we have done? And she said, well, I wanted you to carry me because then I wouldn't be scared, but I just hurt my back. So that was not within the limits. And so I said, no, I couldn't carry you because I've hurt my back, I can't carry you right now. And so then she said, oh, and I said, because she's three, I kind of helped gave some solutions for her. But the older your children are, the more you want them to come up with solutions and you worked as a team, but it'd be more child-led, but because she's three, I kind of helped her out. And I said, what about if you told me, mom, I'm scared, and then I would have known to come over and help you. But you just yelling, no, no, I don't wanna go, and screaming, I, I don't know what that means. And I said, another thing is, I could have came and I could have held your hand and walked you to the car. If you would have just said, mom, come hold my hand, I could have done that, or we could have unplugged Mickey, so he would have been smaller. And, he won't be hanging over you, but I needed to know your emotions so I could help you with that. So for this problem, the problem was really, I didn't know what emotion she was feeling, but she probably didn't really know all of it either. So the power of emotion coaching really is that we give name to these emotions and we problem solve, but the biggest power is the empathy we show to our children for those emotions, because we show them that they matter to us that somebody cares about the way they feel, that they are important. 
And knowing that is going to last a lifetime for them. They will know that somebody cares about them. And so as we give them that empathy, help them name their emotion, and then help them problem solve, they will know they're important. And later on, they will be able to use those. And um, actually, just last week, my daughter, she's three. We've been emotion coaching with her for about a year now. So when she was two, we started, she was having a lot of tantrums. And I'd read about emotion coaching a couple of years before, and I'd been like, there's no way that is practical. There's no way that's going to happen because I've been working in, in a child care center. But I decided it was just me and my daughter. So I was go ahead and try it. And she was getting frustrated because she couldn't put her shoes on. And so I started being like, wow, you look really frustrated. Are you feeling frustrated? And she's like, yeah, I'm frustrated. I'm like, is it because you can't get your shoes on? She's like, yeah. And so then we'd help get our shoes on. Well, pretty soon, a couple of days later, I start hearing... I'm so frustrated. And I was like, wow, that's a huge step that she could vocalize her emotion. And so that I was able to go in and help her and help her get her shoes on. And that has boiled over into so many things. As she's doing things, we don't have the tantrums because she's able to vocalize. I'm frustrated. There's no tantrum needed because she's put that out there. And I know then, okay, look, it's time for me to step in and help her. So a couple weeks ago, oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> the reason why this is so important is not just helping them know that they matter, which is a huge thing, is then them being able to use it. So they are gonna then be able to take the steps of emotion coaching and emotion coach themselves or emotion coach their siblings. Um, in fact, a couple weeks ago, I was, um, my dad passed away a year ago. And so I was kind of feeling kind of sad. And I was thinking about him and I was in our, my room all by myself. My kids were upstairs and so I was just crying, just, you know, letting the emotions out because it's good too. And my daughter comes in and she sees me crying and she climbs up on, um, on my lap and she says, oh mom, oh mom, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just sad. And she gives me a big hug and like my tears and says, mom, I know you're going to be okay. I know it's going to be okay. It's okay to be sad, but you're going to be okay. And I said, you're right. You're right. And then she said, so that was her kind of like, she, and then she's like, why are you sad? And I said, well, I just, I really miss Papa because that's what we called my dad. I really miss Papa. And she's like, I miss him too. And I said, I know. And it just makes me sad sometimes. And then she said, you know, mom, I think you're tired too. So let's go brush our teeth and put on our jammies and off to bed. And I just laughed and I smiled because there was my daughter emotion coaching me. I was sad. I missed my dad, but also I was very tired and she read all my signals right. Here is a three-year-old who was able to sit in my lap empathetically, comfort me, but not take the problem on herself. She wasn't trying to fix it. She was just trying to help me know that she was there with me. And I think that is truly the power of emotion coaching. If we can give our kids those tools, they will be so much better for life. So thank you um, for watching this. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe down below. If you have any questions, um, put your questions in the comments. Or if you have any comments, put the comments in the comments. Um, the last video I'm going to do, like, I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. So uh, just as a recap, this is a five-week week being like a relative term a uh, five week video series and so we will we still have three more three more wow i wish i could count so anyway um thank you so much for listening and please let me know how your emotion coaching goes and remember it takes time it takes practice and you don't have to be perfect at it actually john gottman said that 40 percent is all 40 percent of the time less than half of the time of you dealing with emotions with your children is all you need to make a difference in their ability to handle their emotions. So just 40% of the time. So if you screw it up one day, which I do all the time, it's okay. Just do it again another day. Just keep trying and I promise it'll make a difference. So thanks for watching. Bye.